Welcome to Worksheet Cloud, Grade 9 English students. Today is Fake Friday, um, and unlike fake news, we are allowed to be happy about this. So I'm very excited for another long weekend. I'm sure you are too. Before we start with the lesson today, again, any queries, concerns, information required, please use Grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com. This is for if you're confused about something and you just feel you need a little bit more clarity, feel free to email and we'll get back to you and hopefully be able to assist you or answer your question. All right, so as I always do for my lessons, I introduce myself if you're not sure of who I am. I am Mrs. Nortier. I will be your grade nine English teacher for today. And you know what? It's a good day to have a good day. So I'm excited for this lesson. I hope you're pumped. Let's get going. Right, so today in history, right, always good to know what's happened, something you can kind of um, share your newfound knowledge. Today in history, in 1789, I'm not going to do the maths of how long ago that was. You can work it out. George Washington was inaugurated as the President of the United States, taking the oath of office on the balcony of the Federal Hall in New York City. So go and tell your parents, you now know something about today, the history of it, test if they know. What will you need today? You will need pen and paper because we are going to be doing a few interactive activities However, if you prefer just to think through the activities, um, think what your answers would be, feel free. I have no problem with that. Um, but if you would like to jot down notes, please again, also feel free. All right, whatever works easier or easiest for you and the way that you like to get it done. Okay, so what are we even doing today? Today, we are looking at language elements which cause confusion. Now, some of these actually purposely cause confusion. Others are grammatical errors. Others are similar or sound the same, and that's why there is confusion. All right, so I know some of you are thinking all language causes confusion, but um, try and keep an open mind. We're going to hone it down to those ones today, which I know are quite difficult, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll walk away saying, I'm not confused anymore. I know these language elements. I can do them. So we're going to be looking at homophones and homonyms, malapropisms, pun, and ambiguity. I'm sure you've heard all of those before. If not, don't stress. We'll go through it now. But otherwise, see this as recap, um, revision, making sure that you are comfortable and familiar. Right, so if the English language made any sense, a catastrophe would be an apostrophe with fur. So read that again. It took me the first couple of times as well. So as I said, I know people think English is confusing. But if you learn the basic elements, it's a lot easier to grasp. Okay, so we're going to look at what a homonym is. A homonym is when two words sound the same and are spelled the same, but the meaning is completely different. So remember, homonym, spelling, and sound is exactly the same, meaning completely different. Okay, here's an example. Let's take the word cricket. You can see it repeated here twice, cricket and cricket. Now, the first type of cricket is a sport which uses a bat, ball, and wickets. You can see here they're playing cricket. Cricket's not my favorite sport, but yeah, let's go with it. All right, so there you can see cricket is a game or a sport being played. However, a cricket is also an insect related to a grasshopper. Right, so you can see here on the screen it's a little insect. Two completely different things. One is a sport, one is a bug. But it sounds the same, 
and it is spelt exactly the same. Therefore, homonym. Let's look at another example. The word ball. Now, a ball, and you can see uh, spelling exactly the same, the pronunciation exactly the same. A ball is either a round object, or actually you can have different um, sizes or shapes, but generally a round object used in sport. However, you also can talk about a ball, a fancy party. Have you ever heard of a masquerade ball where you wear a mask and then no one can see who you are? But that is what a ball is, a very fancy, elegant party. Now, again, something used in sport versus a party. Completely different. Sound the same. Spelled the same. Therefore, a homonym. Let's see if you can try it on your own. I'm going to give you two. The first one is the word right. Have a look. Spelled the same. Sounds the same. But they are different meanings. Right, so stop the computer or stop your video rather if necessary. Think about the two different meanings. Write it down. Think about it, whichever is easiest. Then we'll come back to it. Okay, so let's have a look. Right can either be a direction. So the direction opposite to left. Or it can mean you are correct. You were right about it. So direction versus being correct. Okay, so I hope you guys would come up with those two. Remember, it had to be the same spelling. Right, here's another one. Roast and roast. Spelled the same, sounds the same, looks the same. Right, let's see if you can come up again with two different variations. Okay, so the first roast is a traditional dinner. The second one is if you mock someone, which you shouldn't be doing. You should never be roasting people. You should only be roasting lovely beef or gammon or chicken. But there you can see a traditional dinner versus if you're mocking someone. Right, so there are two words, well, sorry, one word roast, but with two different meanings. Okay, so to wrap up a homonym, sounds the same, spelled the same, different meanings. Okay, now we're moving on to a homophone. A homophone, two words which sound the same, but the meaning and the spelling are now different. I know it's a cheesy way to remember, but if you speak on the phone, you are using what you can hear. So they sound the same. That is the only commonality in homophones. So remember, phone is all about sound. Right, having a look at our first homophone example. We've got the word red. So red as in the past tense of reading, I read the set workbook, or read as in one of the colors, it's a primary color. So here you can see the words are pronounced exactly the same, red and red. But now if we look, they are spelt differently and they have different meaning. Right, the next one is allowed. So let's look again. Allowed, allowed. Sounds exactly the same. Sounds the same. One is if you grant permission. So cameras are allowed. Another one is if you say something out loud. So reading aloud in class is when you read out loud. However, being allowed to go to the toilet during class is permission. Right, so homophones sound in common. Let's see again if you're able to come up with your definitions here. Right and right. Sounds exactly the same, but the spelling is now completely different. Right, so stop the um, video. Think about it or write it down. 
we'll come back and check if you were on the right track. Right, so the first right is again the direction opposite to left, or it can mean to be correct. But the second one with the W is if you put pen to paper. So completely different meanings, completely different spellings, but sounds exactly the same. Okay, here's another one that I'd like you to try. So stop the video or think about it. Bored or bored. Again, sounds the same. Spelling you can see is different. See if you can come up with the definitions. Right, so the first board, and I feel like maybe a lot of you have been going through this in lockdown, is when you have nothing to do. You're bored, you're restless, you just feel as though there is nothing left <laughs> to keep you entertained. Luckily, you're watching this, so you can't be bored. The other board is one on which you cut cheese or a chalkboard where your teacher can write. Right, so like I said, first one is when you have nothing to do. Maybe you feel like that little boy. The second one is a board on which you can cut cheese or write on the chalkboard. Right, so let's quickly recap homophones versus homonym. We did homonyms first. That is when it is spelt the same, sounds the same, but different meaning. Homophone only sounds the same. Different spelling, different meaning. All right, so I hope that wraps up homophones and homonyms for you. I find that that's probably the easier one, but it's more just knowing which is which. Now let's look at a malapropism. You might be thinking, I've never heard of this. It's quite a difficult concept um, because it depends on you knowing your vocab very well. But let's go through it. It will help you to have an understanding and then you can start building on bringing in the vocabulary. So a malapropism is when you use a word incorrectly in a sentence because it sounds so similar to the correct word. They don't sound the same. Remember, sounding the same as homonyms, homophones, but they sound similar enough to be confused, and now it doesn't make any sense in the sentence. Let's look at examples. All right, so you've all heard the nursery rhyme, Mary had a little lamb with fleeces, white as snow. <laughs> Don't laugh at my singing. Um, so here's fleece. It's like a, wool, a woolen material. So a little lamb who's got wool, wool coating as white as snow. We don't say Mary had a little lamb with fleas as white as snow. Now fleas and fleece don't sound exactly the same, but they sound similar enough that you can confuse them in a sentence. Hopefully not though. Right, here's another example. He had to dissolve the conflict. You can't dissolve a fight. It's not like pouring sugar or salt or whatever into water and watching it dissolve. You need to resolve the conflict. So dissolve and resolve, they're not spelled the same. They don't sound exactly the same. But there's an element to it of similarity, which can then be confused. Let's see if you can able or you're able to tackle it yourself. If you drop the ball, you are illuminated from the game. Now, think about it. What do you think that person meant to say? If you drop the ball, you are eliminated from the game because if you're illuminated I'm shining a light on you but if you're eliminated it means you're out you need to go right so not you can't be illuminated from a game but you can be eliminated from the game let's see the next one's enlightening look he's been struck by enlightening mm, no you can't be struck by enlightening 
but you can be struck by actual physical lightning. All right, so again, it's just misunderstanding words that have similarities and then using it incorrectly in the sentence. Okay, so malaprosism, it's not spelled the same. It doesn't sound exactly the same, but it sounds similar enough that it can be used in a sentence incorrectly. All right, so you can now go and tell people you know what a malaprosism is. It's quite a mouthful. Okay, puns we've done, but because puns also have a double meaning, I decided to bring it in here again as a refresher. So a pun is on purpose. It's an intentional play on words. Why? To create humor or to grab your attention. Let's have a look. Here's an example. Why are teddy bears never hungry? Because they are always stuffed. Now, stuffed is the play on words. It can either mean you're full from food, you've eaten too much, like Christmas Day lunch, you're stuffed. Or let's look at the pun, the humor. The teddy bear we know is stuffed with cotton wool. We know that's how teddy bears are made in their size. If you've ever been to build a bear, then you'll know. So the pun is on the word stuffed, which can mean you're full from food or you're full of cotton wool. Let's look at the next one. Look, it's a blue moon. And then the moon is singing, my baby left me and I'm so sad. Guys, so blue is a color. Often if it's a full moon, it has a bit of a blue tinge. So we say it's a blue moon. Also, if someone says you're blue or you seem very blue today, it can mean that you look very sad. And this moon is very sad because his girlfriend or boyfriend has just left him or her. All right, so there is the pun, the humor. Let's try it out. Lol, you crack me up. Think about it. I'll give you 30 seconds. Pause if you need to. All right. Lol, you crack me up. Crack me up can mean to literally crack or break open an egg or to make someone laugh. So this egg, fellow egg friend, have a good chuckle cracking him up, but also he's physically cracking and falling apart. Shame. All right, last pun example. Let's talk about you. Think about it. Okay, so a taco is a Mexican dish, right? So I'm sure you've had tacos before. It's like hard shells and then you can stuff it with mints and avo and cream cheese. Now I feel like a taco. But it can also sound like, let's talk about you. All right, how are you doing? So the taco is taco talking about you. All right, so puns are often very cheesy, but they're meant to be because it's supposed to have, you know, that little inward giggle effect so it catches your attention remember a pun is on purpose it is an intentional play on words All right now i'm going to look at ambiguity i think this is the one that confuses people the most and it comes up in a lot of your exams ambiguity is when you make a grammatical error that then leads to confusion and causes two meanings so a malapropism is like a spelling error, if you will. Not spelling, actually, but you use the wrong word. In ambiguity, you create a whole different idea by unfortunately giving the incorrect grammar. Let's look. Please help the nurse's home. Now, a nurse's home is a medical facility or accommodation for the elderly. But now, when I read that, I know the apostrophe should help me, but please help the nurse's home. Must I donate money to the nurse's home? Or am I supposed to go to the home and offer to drive the nurses back to their home? Now, I know it sounds silly. You're thinking, oh, no one's going to think you need to drive your car there and drive the nurse's home. But it's an ambiguous sign. It's an ambiguous sentence. So remember, don't put ambiguity in your writing because it causes confusion. 
let's look at this next one. I'm sure you would not want your parents um, doing this to you. We feed the sharks at noon. Bring your kids. Now, that was a sign at an aquarium. We feed the sharks at noon. Bring your kids. Think about the ambiguity there. What is the actual meaning? But unfortunately, now the meaning coming across. Okay, so it should have said, bring your kids to watch the shark feeding. That's what it means. Bring your kids at noon. They can watch the sharks get fed. But it sounds like we feed the sharks at noon. Bring your kids and we'll feed them to the sharks. See, so again, I know it's not what it intentionally means, but it can cause room for confusion. Right, so ambiguity is like one whole big confusion rolled into one. And it's never intentional. It's almost like a grammatical error that's just left it open for interpretation. Okay, so to wrap up today, we looked at homophones and homonyms, malapropisms, puns, which is an intentional double meaning, ambiguity, which is an unintentional, mistaken double meaning. Now, I know by this stage you're thinking English language is crazy. But you know what? Let's have a look and see what other elements of English language we have that can be considered crazy. At the end of the day, it's a fun language. <laughs> Try and think of it like that. It always keeps you on your toes. facts about English here's one more the correct way is to spell potato if GH can stand for P as in hiccup if O U G H can stand for O as in do P H T H can stand for T E I G H for A T T E for T E A U for O then putting all the little meanings together. The correct way to spell potato would be gofthatu. See, so spelling is complicated as well in English. But luckily you've had wonderful teachers who've taught you the correct way to spell potato. Thanks so much for listening today, grade nines. I hope that you've learned something and that you'll be able to apply this vocab to your language impress some people and enjoy your long weekend make the most of it spend it with your family and i'll see you guys on monday catch you on the other side